morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Hello, how are you? Praise we are excited. We love Jesus and we know that he's coming soon. If you don't know he's coming soon now, then you need to wake up, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're excited. Thank you, Jesus. Rachel, I was looking for him last night. Yes, yeah. yeah. thank you. Happy Lord. Wait for everybody. Appreciate everybody's service. All right, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Jesus, Lord God, we just ask you, Lord God, to touch us. Touch this church. Touch those on Facebook and YouTube and wherever, Lord God. Holy Spirit, send your word out, Lord God. We just love you. We praise you. We thank you, God. We give you all the honor. All the glory, Lord God, Jesus. We live just, devil, we want you to know that we're going to sing a little louder in the name of Jesus. Because we know that worship is our weapon, Lord God. Jesus, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Soon and very soon, in Jesus' name, amen. Rachel, uh, Jesse has asked for prayer. He said we had text Jesse and uh, our pastor for real fast. And our pastor is doing fantastic our, this morning. All right, for yeah. the Lord. Thank you. Even Jesus. ate breakfast. All right. <laughs> That's what we want to hear. Amen. I also have a cousin that um, her daughter is having surgery and her husband is having surgery. Jesus, Lord God, you see these needs God, this morning, God, God, you see all the needs, Lord God. God, just, Lord God, touch Jesse, Lord God, touch his body, Lord God. Jesus, touch my daddy, my pastor daddy, Lord God, continue to heal his body, Lord God. Jesus, touch Rose's cousin, Lord God, and touch her, Lord God. Jesus, we rebuke this COVID in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We come against it. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord God's sake, you just need to shut up and sit down in the name of Jesus. The church is alive and we're doing well in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, we just ask you to heal in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, church.
saying that Jesus was a racist it breaks my heart. Jesus died for every single person on this planet. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. He has died for us all. of God matter. All eyes in the, in the eyes of the Father matter. He gave His Son to die for us. He gave His Son. He 
can you put a picture of the crucifixion right there just for a minute from the passion? You have to see some people's. I, I remember wearing a shirt one time, and I wore it to my work. There was no shame in my game, church. And it said, if I'm okay, and you're okay, explain this. And it had a bloody picture of Jesus on the shirt. My wife used to steal it from me and wear it all the time. We wore that thing out. After 20 years, we finally had to throw it away. But I'm going to tell you something, church. Jesus gave everything to us with his life. He gave everything to us. She's going to put that up here in just a minute. You're going to see the love of God. People criticize me because I took my kids to the Passion at 5 and 7. They said they don't understand that. But they did. They cried through the whole thing. They cried through the whole thing to know that Jesus took those stripes upon his back so ugly. Hold on, my God, God woke me in the middle of the night, church. He said, I am coming. I am coming. And there's nothing on this earth that can stop me. Yeah. Nothing on this earth. Every knee will bow. Yeah. Every tongue will confess that I am Lord, said Jesus. He said it. Talk about being fired up this morning, church. I'm fired up this morning. Talking to my neighbors. They don't even know. They said, Well, I read the word of God. Well, read it again because you didn't understand it the first time. <laughs> Keep reading it. Because every time he's going to show you something different. Amen. Amen. You have to stand on the word. Thank you. Do you have it from the passion? <laughs> Your love never ending. Your love has never failed me. Your love, your love.
Pastor sends his love this morning, and he is doing fantastic. He was able to eat today, and so he's probably coming home tomorrow. Wow. Thank you. 
God shows up. God shows up. I was reading a book. I don't know if you all know who, thanks, who John Bevere is. The Bait of Satan, he wrote that book. But he also wrote another book. He's written many books. But he talks in there one time when he went into a service and there was no reverence. There was absolutely no reverence. Everybody was carrying on their own conversations with each other. Everybody was paying more attention to the children. They were paying more attention to other things. And he was taken back totally and wondering why when we're singing songs, why we're not healing the songs or why things aren't happening. And so he tells a story about how he got up and he told everybody about reverencing God and different things like this. And how everybody brought everybody to prayer and about how everybody just, uh, changed their whole attitude and everybody began to reverence God. And when that happened, he said they got everybody together on this, okay? And all of a sudden, he said, he heard something that sounded like a jet going over the church. Now, he was in the Dominican Republic. He had just gotten there, okay? And he just started to preach. And when he did, he heard the jet going over. And this is after everybody fell in reverence to God. Uh -huh. After he had to bring it to everybody's attention. Come on. He heard the jet, and he was like, wow, I didn't know there was an airport right next to the church. Uh -huh. And so, but now this, this noise went on for about 10 minutes. And he still can hear the noise, and he didn't say anything about it. He just kept hearing it. And then he said, we had a little bit of a lull, and we went back into worship, and all of a sudden he heard a wind noise. Mm. A wind noise like you, like you never heard. The sound of the jet went away, but a wind noise. And everybody did the dust. Come on. The whole church. Yeah. Because everybody was reverencing. So yeah. anyway, after the service, he went outside, and there was people, park attend parking attendants and different people. And, they, and he asked them, he said, is there a, an airport around here? And uh, they said, no. And, and he said, well, what was that noise? And they said, we don't know. It was coming from inside the church. <laughs> that's Jesus right here. That's now, that's, that is a story. That's a Holy Ghost. That is, it's accessible to every one of us. Man. As long as you learn to reverence God. Yes. And when God is speaking and when the anointing is coming forward, yes, Lord. you've got to pay attention. Man. Because if not, then you fall out of that reverence. When God speaks and God comes into a room and the Spirit of God is moving, you must humble yourself to it. Yes. You must fall in line with this. Yes, amen. If we want God's movement, and in these days, let me tell you what's going on in this, in this country and in this world right now is scary to those who don't know God. Praise God for us. It is scary. You need, right now, you need Jesus more than you've ever needed him before. And you needed him that bad amen. before you just didn't know him. Amen. But it is getting so, so bad. Right. I'm just going to say it. If you don't vote, if we lose this election, it's the beginning of the end. Which won't happen. I believe that he's going to be reelected. But I'm going to tell you what. Biden's already made it clear. I'm, I'm, ser I'm sorry. But I'm just going to say it. Things are going to change. Church, all of our benefits are going to go away. They're already doing it in California, as Rachel said. Yes, they are. They're already trying to stop music no and singing in the worship. If you don't vote, and if we do not hold on to a president that is giving us all our Christian values back, he's taking it all back, he won't let them touch us. You've got to vote this way. Come on. You have to vote this way. God would have you vote that way. That's it. Tell the truth. Go. Good. I went off a little bit on that just because of the reverence that we're talking about here to God. God makes things possible. Amen. All things. But if you won't reverence him and you won't come to church and reverence him, you won't come to church and join with everybody else and worship him. You know, music was really good this morning. I got to sit over there, stand over there and listen to you guys. You guys were phenomenal. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you were phenomenal only because the Spirit of God was moving. Yes. I could hear, oh my gosh, the clarity was unbelievable. All Praise three God. of you blended, four of you blended so well that it was like you could hear angels singing above you. I'm just telling you this because these people that sing in the worship team, they just happen to reverence God when they're singing. 
They don't just go up there and put on an act. They go up there and they sing to him. Yes, yes, Lord. That's what they do. Yes, and if you're Lord. missing it, you're missing it. Yes. And I thank you, Mark, for last for last Sunday. I want to thank you for yes. being obedient Amen. and reverencing God. Yep. I thank you for reverencing him. Not for what word you brought forth, but that was one of the best messages I've ever heard you preach. When you went into the dry bones, that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. See, if you all would pay attention, if all of us would pay attention, come on, because we don't always pay attention, come on, God will bring forth a word to you, and the anointing will flow through you, and you will be changed. But if you don't want to be changed, you won't be. Come on. If you want to stay where you are, you will. I'm not lifting people up. No, no. I'm reverencing Him. The Spirit of God. And I thank the people Holy that Ghost reverence Him Hallelujah. for being obedient. Because, see, we have to have this in our church. We have to have people that are going to reverence God. We have to. We have to teach it. We have to preach it. We have to call them out. If, we're trying, if I'm trying to speak up here and somebody else is talking, I should do what some of the preachers do when I've seen them. Stop and go, excuse me. You know? I just, you know, God's word's coming forth now. Okay? Yeah. His word's coming. Please reverence his word. Because I've seen that a lot in churches. Yeah. And you don't understand how that can stop things. It can stop the flow of the spirit. Yeah. Just because you want to laugh at some little kid, or you want to say something, and I'm as guilty as anybody. Well, we have to learn that. Help us, oh God. But we have to catch ourselves, too. Help us, oh God. At least I get smacked in the back of the head by Wendy when I act like that. <laughs> she does. She'll tell me. She'll go, and I'll be like, I'll blame it on Tom or something. But, anyway, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, people, is God's word must be reverenced. Gosh, I feel the Lord here today. When I walked in this place, I could feel the Lord. Mm. You know, I just came off of working 10 days with one day off. Oh, my God. Ten days was one day off. We, I got off last Sunday, and I had five days before that and five days after. Ten days of one day off, ten hours a day. One day I didn't even get lunch because I was so busy. Oh, if I don't give God his due, if I don't reverence God in the morning before I go to work, there's no way, Brother Jeff, I can do it. Amen. I'm not capable of it. I'm 64 years old, but I can feel like I'm 24. Praise God. Like I do right now when the spirit is moving. Oh, yes, yes. But if you're not watchful and, and if you're not close to God, you're not reverencing God, you can all of a sudden feel your age. Oh, amen. Don't get me wrong. The body has to rest. Because yesterday all I did was sleep all day. I, was in the I understand. I shared that with some. My gosh, I'm going to it again. This is such an awesome. I feel the spirit. Feel the Praise God. God. Because of the reverence. Because we're reverencing him right now. Yep. We're reverencing him right now. Wow. Because you know what? It's all about him. All about you. It's all about him. And when we all yield God. ourselves, yeah. and when we give ourselves to him and only him, all guess God. what? We get a strength we don't even know we have. That's true. I'm going to start on Psalms 95 if I can. Actually, no. I'll do that next. No, we'll start with Psalms 95. Praise God. That's where he wants to be. Psalms 95. We'll let the... I'll get a drink while they're getting the scripture. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Amen. 
For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice. Harden not your heart as in the provocation and in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with their generation, and said it is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear my wrath, that they should not enter unto my rest. He tells you what to do. And then as he gets to the bottom, he explains to you what happened in the desert and why they had to wander for 40 years. Mm, yes. And go into the promised land. If you want to enter into God's rest, then you must reverence him all the time. Father, I, 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 Not just once in a while, but all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. There's a rest. There's a rest that we can enter into. A rest that is not available to the common man. It is not available to the Christian that will not recognize him as a great God and a great king above all gods. If you can't recognize him to that, there's no rest there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because your reverence brings strength. It brings a joy. Lord, I'm doing the best I can with this. But that rest, he says, whom I swear my wrath that they should not enter unto my rest. You cannot enter into God's rest if you don't believe him. And you're gonna have you're gonna struggle in your faith if you don't believe him. Okay? And you how do you believe God? By reverencing him and recognizing him. See, it's hard to reverence something or somebody if you don't know them. And so this is why it's so important that we continue to know God so we can enter into that rest that God talks about. If you go over to Hebrews chapter 3, it's going to say the same thing. I like to go back to the New Testament too. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 11. I go to a lot of, I'm all about Scripture. Amen. Amen. So I have to turn pages a lot. I'm not into the, into the phones. I don't know, it's just something about the phone. I feel like I'm on Facebook or something, even though I'm not. You know, like, I need to be in my book. I'm not criticizing anybody who does the phone, but that might be what they have in this music world. But I like the book. I got it all. Anyway, we've talked about this before. Hebrews 3. Okay. And uh, I'll start with verse 10. It says, I'm sorry, I'll start with verse 10. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart. And they have not known my way, so I swore my wrath, they shall not enter unto, into my rest. I wanted to repeat that so you all would understand. That there is a, one time Wendy and I were praying. And we were praying in our living room. I think I told you this before, but I'm going to tell you again. And all of a sudden, I had a vision of a bunch of trees. I was like up hovering in a tree. And it was all green, blue sky. It was gorgeous. I, I can't describe it to you. And I was like floating. And all of a sudden, I had a peace come on me like I've never felt before. Everything, every bad thing was gone. Every bad thought was gone. I was right there in the middle of this vision. It was gone. And he let me see this for, a, oh, I don't know how long, maybe 30 seconds or so. And I came back and I told Wendy, I said, oh my gosh. And I explained to her what happened. God showed me that that rest and that area that I was in, not even a nuclear weapon could penetrate. Mm -hmm. It could not penetrate. Amen. Amen. See, there is a rest in the Lord that will just totally Goodness. flabbergast you. There is a rest that everybody can enter into, but you have got to learn how to reverence the Lord thy God, your maker. We must learn how to do this. Now let me let me give you something here that explains a little bit about how great of a God we have. Everybody with me? Amen. Everybody with me? Amen. All right. Let's go to Isaiah chapter forty. In 
verse 12. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with the span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains and scales and the hills and the mountains? Amen. Amen. He's measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. Every bit of water on this earth, he can put in the hollow of his hand. Now this is God. This is a God you better reverence. This is a God we're to fear. Okay. That doesn't mean go running in the night and run away from him. But you, it's, it's more than just a respect. This is a God that can weigh the oceans in his hand. Amen. People, this is a God. A span is from your pinky to your thumb. The heavens, the universe. He can hold in, his, in the span of his hand. Are you grasping some of this? Some of you aren't grasping this. Because I'm going to tell you what. This should leave you in awe of who God really is. He's not a God that you would think you could stand here and just talk to as a person. God is a spirit. And the universe was created by him. It's only this big to him. Think about that only this big to him. This is the kind of reverence that we must give him. Not just because he's a big God, because he is a great and mighty yes, God. He is. Yes. Great yes. and mighty. Is, those words don't even, I don't even know how to describe our great and mighty God. Yes. Great and mighty, there's got to be bigger words than that to describe him. And you don't think that he doesn't know what you're going through? You don't think that he doesn't know your thoughts. You can get into that too. He knows every thought. He knows what you're thinking right this very second. Let's go to Psalms 150. Psalms 150, starting with verse 1. Are you all ready for scripture? Yep. Okay, one is. How about the rest of you? All right. Hallelujah. 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 You there? Okay. Amen. Starting with verse 1. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the heavens of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to the abundance of his greatness. Come on now. This is what we're doing. We're, we're reading this stuff. To help us to understand that we've got to reverence him. He will put a smile on your face. He will put joy in your heart. He will if you let him. Let your guard down just once. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and singular group dance. Praise him with stringed and wind instruments or flutes. I'm reading the Amplified if y'all were wondering. Okay? I got both on you. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud, clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath and every breath of light praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Everything that has breath, let him praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. And so what we need to be doing and why we're coming to church and why we're, when we reverence God, we need to understand. Let the word spoken by Christ the Messiah have its home in your hearts and minds and dwell in you in all its richness with in all its richness. Thank you. 
Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Oh, that's the Amplified. Sorry. <laughs> that messed me up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew chapter 18. I'll stay on the King James. If I can amplify it, I'll let you know. Sorry about that. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20. I'm going somewhere. You coming with me? Yes. All righty. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20. I'm going to start with actually verse 19. And this is a scripture I use all the time. Because remember, we're all together in this. And we're all in one mind. I'm trying to get us all in one in one mind, as it says in Acts chapter 2. That's what we need to be when we reverence right. God. And that's what I was saying when we enter the church in the morning. We need to enter together. If you want to see God do great and mighty things in the service, then come in and understand that you have got to fall in line with everybody else or stay on. Yes. We must do that. I'm not being mean. Same to me. If I can't come into church and keep my mind and my heart on the things of Jesus, I could be harming the whole unity of the whole service. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So all of us together, all of us together, we must be in agreement, all of us. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Wow, we got a quiet church this morning. That's what happens when you get a lot of scripture. That's good. Huh? Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We need each other. We need to be together. We need to be reverencing God together. We need, that's why when the music went on this morning, hopefully everybody was communicating with the Lord in that way. That's just about the church. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's go, as we're speaking about the church and all of us involved, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. And I can go on and on and say, if the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not the body, you are part of the body. Amen. Every one of us. Amen. If Tom doesn't show up for church, music suffers. Okay? Sometimes he can't be here. Somebody fills in. But Brother Bobby, if you don't come, somebody else is going to have to do it. Karen, she brings exhortation. She brings the, the message. She interprets the tongues. If she doesn't show up, somebody else is going to have to do it. Okay? We all have different jobs. If you're sitting here today and say, well, I don't have a job. Yes, you do. Maybe it is that you're not reverencing the Lord and you haven't found it yet. A lot of people can sit there for 20, 30 years in a, in a church pew and still be a baby in Christ. Yes, they do. Because they've never truly understood yes. that we have to communicate with the Lord in order to get instructions from the Lord to know where we need to be. But we're all in the same body. Every one of us. But we have to play a role. 
If you don't have a job, then talk to the pastor and see what you can possibly do as far as uh, us praying for you. Because I'm telling you what, every single person here has got something in their heart of some kind of duty they should be doing That's for God. True. That's true. They do because the Lord gave it to you. He put you here for a purpose. That's right. yeah. So you need to get busy. Yep. We need to get busy about the things of the Lord, especially nowadays. But I'm going to tell you what, it's going to take hard prayer. It's going to take hard battle. The army of God. Remember that song we used to sing about the army of God? All of us, because right now God's calling us. He's calling us to wake up because suddenly it's upon you. Suddenly the end times are upon us. Now if God moves forward and raptures us out of here before it gets really bad, praise God. But if he doesn't, then you need to be prepared. And you're not going to get prepared by just sitting there. You've got to get busy. Amen. Let's look at uh, Exodus chapter 3. I only got about 25 more scriptures. So. <laughs> um, Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 5. This is when Moses went up on the mountain to see the Lord. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire in the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight where the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not near hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet for the place where thou standest is holy ground. When you walk through the church doors back here, understand that this is holy ground. Understand that God is going to show up here. We're expecting the Lord to show up. We're, we reverence Him so dearly that we're expecting Him to show up. And God made it clear to Moses, take your shoes off there, buddy. Take your shoes off. You are on the ground. Because I'm here. And where God is, it's holy. Amen. And so I'm not saying that we're supposed to take our shoes off when we come in here, but aren't we? But aren't we? When I spent those four years of solid prayer that I did at lunchtime when I was up in South Dakota, I spent four solid years four solid years of praying over my lunch and I never missed. And if I did, I don't remember. But I never wore my shoes. I always took my shoes off. Because I knew that he was going to show up. I would reverence him and I would fall on my face sometimes. I'd run around the building sometimes inside that church. There was nobody there but me. And I would praise him and scream and do all kinds of things. God, reverencing him. And one time I did it on a Saturday. I wouldn't even work. I just went on a Saturday. And it was a lady there who used to clean the church. She was downstairs cleaning the church. And I was upstairs praying around the church. And I left. And then she went up to clean the sanctuary. And she stood up in church on Sunday, which was the next day. And she said, now I'm just, please don't take this wrong. I just want you to understand something. I am no better than you. I don't have a special anything that you don't have. But when you reverence God, he's going to show up. Yes, he will. She stood up on Sunday and said, after Brother Al left, and I went in there to clean I was almost taken off my feet by the spirit that was in the sanctuary. And it wasn't me, it was God because I reverenced him. Yes, amen. You can bring the spirit of God here by reverencing him. This is the whole message today. To understand that if we don't reverence him, what happens? There's no rest. There's no nothing. 
It's you. Let's read Leviticus chapter 10. I'm winding down. I don't have too much more. Leviticus chapter 10. And let's read a little bit about what happens when you don't reverence God. Leviticus chapter 10, and starting with verse 1. I'm going to read out of the Amplified side of it, if I could. Sometimes it's easier to understand. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took a censer and put fire in it, and put incense on it, and offered strange and unholy fire before the Lord, as he had not commanded them. you got to understand, when, when, when they did offerings unto God, there was certain procedure laid out, certain procedure on how you do it. They did it their own way. And there came forth fire before the Lord, and killed them, and they died before the Lord. The Lord did. He burned it up. He said, oh, no, I don't accept that. Then Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord meant when he said, I and my will will not their own will be acknowledged as hallowed by those who come near me and before all the people I will be honored. God says that he will, you will honor him and you will reverence him by what he says and he even tells you how to do it. You can't just come in and do what you want. There's a certain procedure. You enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. You enter the courts happy. You enter the courts with joy. You come in all, here I am, Lord. Happy-go-lucky. I don't even like that word, lucky, so I'll throw that away. That's just a saying. But when we enter his courts, we should be thrilled to be here, Karen. Thrilled to be here. If you're not thrilled to be here, why are you here? Sadly, a lot of people think that God is just going to do everything they want him to do and fix their problems and do everything. And, you know, God will. But we have to do our part, too. Amen. There's a role that we must play. We have to. Okay. Let's just summarize here. i got three more scriptures. Let's go to... Psalms chapter 5. You know, you can't make people do what God says to do. You can't make them. All you can do is come up here, and as it says in Romans 10 and 14, how will they believe without a preacher? You just got to come up here and you got to preach it. Right, Rachel? You just got to come up here and preach it. It doesn't matter. You know, it, it doesn't. You have to do it anyway. Because people are going to take it or they're not. And it's sad because the Word of God is the answer. The Word of God is the answer. Mm-hmm. So Psalms 5 and verse 7. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting to tell you the, the scripture. Huh? Yeah. Start with, well, let's just read verse 7. <laughs> but as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy. And in the fear will I worship towards thy holy temple. And the Amplified says... But as for me, I will enter your house through the abundance of your steadfast love and mercy. I will worship towards and at your holy temple in reverent fear and awe of you. We stand in awe of him. That's what we do. Leviticus 19, chapter 30, or not chapter 30, but verse 30. And the Lord says, you shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. God tells you right there. You must reverence him. Reverence my sanctuary, which is your church. Reverence him, his presence in your church. I am the Lord, God, is what he says. Keep the Sabbath. Let's go to, let's end with Revelations chapter 5, starting with verse 11. And 
And this is what goes on in heaven. And what did Jesus say? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I, heard I saying, Blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him, that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. How long do you think these elders have been doing that? Don't sound to me like they're getting tired of it. That's for sure. Doesn't sound to me, it sounds to me like they're getting more and more excited. Yeah. See, if you try, if you try, and just begin to put forth an effort to find out his greatness and who he is. It will penetrate your heart and you will recognize him for who he is and understand that he can change your situation on the spot. You all remember the story I told you about the bank and I had to get a loan. You remember it? You all remember that story? Phenomenal story. I can end with that story. You want to hear it? Yep. You want to hear the story? And I'll end with this. Yep, come on. Sure. Tell us. When I first got saved in England, I wasn't saved for maybe six months or so, but I had a faith like you had never seen before. I wanted to buy a vehicle. I was in the, it was in the Air Force. And as an E3 at that time, I was only allowed to have $1,800, and they, need, they wanted $2,000 for the vehicle. So I walked into this credit union, and I told them I wanted to get a loan for $2,000. And the, the loan officer said, uh, we can't do it because you're only an E3. You're not authorized. You have to be an E4. They would give only $1,800 is all we can loan you, so you have to come up with the other 200 And I said, well, God told me that I could come over and get this money. I kid you not. Now, you listen to the story, because this is a true story. I said, God told me. I must look like a little fool, but I'll be a fool for him. But this is what I said. And so the lady goes, well, I mean, they were all taken back. She was just... She goes, well, I'm sorry. She said, but we can't loan you this. I said, well, is there somebody else here that I can talk to? Is there possibly a, um, a manager or somebody I can talk to about this? I said, sure, but you, they're not going to let you do it because it's $2,000. You, you know, and I can only give you $1,800. I said, okay. So the manager came over, and she says the same thing. She said, $2,000, and uh, I can only loan you $1,800. And I said, well, I said, um, what if I do the 1800 and I take out a signature loan for the other 200 She goes, no, it's the same thing. We're still loaning you $2,000 and you're only an E3 and we, you're not authorized to have that. And I said, okay, but don't just have to, like back then, they used to have to go before a board the next day when they would review it. Now they do it right on the spot. So I said, well, don't have to go before a board? And she said, yeah. I said, well, let it go. I said, when do they meet? She said, tomorrow morning. And I said, okay, well, let it go through and see what they said. She goes, they're not going to approve it. We can't. It's against regulations. It's against all our laws. And I said, no. I said, just do it and see, because I really know that God wants me to have this loan. See, I'm reverencing him right now. And, and I was so young in the Lord, I didn't, you know, I didn't think anything of it. So the next morning, I go in there, and the lady comes out, or the next afternoon, I, or whatever it was, I went in there, and she goes, um, they said no. They turned it down. I told you they would. So you need to understand that they're not going to approve this loan. I said, well, I said, really? She goes, yeah. And I said, well, I know God told me that I'm supposed to have this. I kept saying this. I know God told me I'm supposed to have this loan. I know he did. And she goes, well, I'm sorry, but they said no. And so and as a manager, I'm sorry, we can't do this. I said, okay, is there anybody else I can talk to? I was very persistent. And she goes, no, I mean, she goes, I'm the manager. I said, isn't there some kind of other manager or something that's over you? And she goes, well, we have a district manager or a regional manager in London, because I was in England at the time. 
she goes and oversees these credit unions. Then she goes, I can call him, but I'm telling you, he's not going to approve it. He's, and, and I said, okay, then you go right ahead and do it. I said, but I think God wants me to have this, or I know God wants me to have this moment. So you go ahead and do this. So she went ahead and called down there as I sat there. Now, by this time, the whole credit union knew me. Everybody there was listening. There was looking at you doing here, you know, thinking that God's going to get him this loan and all this stuff. And here I am, like 28, 29 years old. And, and so anyway, she walks back in. She goes, he said no. And she was mad. He said no. I'm sorry, I had to bother him. She goes, he said no. There's regulations we have. If we do it for you, we got to do it for everybody. You make E4, come back, and we'll loan you the $2,000. But he said no. And I went, okay. I was a little embarrassed, but I was like, okay, well, I knew God wanted me to have this. So I got up, and everybody in the place is looking at me like, what an idiot. So I walked out. That's what I was feeling. So I walked out and got in my car. I'll never forget. I sat. As soon as I got in the car, uh, the car I had at the time, I put my hand on the steering wheel, put my head down, and I remember these words, and I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you for saying no. Because there must be something wrong with this car that you did not want me to have this. Because I knew he told me to do it. I said, so I thank you for it, because you know best. I drove that car right back to work. I drove into the parking lot, and uh, the guy that got me saved, named Terry Warner, he met me at the door as I was walking in. He goes, hey, you got a phone call. Get in here. I said, okay. So I walked in, I picked up the phone, it was it was the credit union, the manager for the credit union. She goes, her exact words to me was, I don't know who you know. She goes, I don't know what happened. She goes, but that manager from London called back and he said, I've had a change of heart. I want him to have that. So what they did, listen to me, what they did was they broke every rule in the book to give me that loan. Because I believed and reverenced God in front of everybody. This, I, I can't tell you enough about how this is exactly, I would never exaggerate about anything, but this is exactly what happened. And the words were, he, had a, he said I had a change of heart. God changes hearts. Yep. God can override any rules or any regulations. Amen. If we will only learn to reverence him, you open up an unbelievable door to your life. You'll have a whole different life. It is so, so important that you understand that. But I wanted to finish up with that story. I. I've told that's about the third time I think I've told it, but sometimes it's appropriate because a lot of people never heard that story before. But this is what kind of a God we have, that he can break rules because he makes them anyway. But he can override things because nothing is impossible for God. I, had, I But see, you have to have the right attitude too. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because you know the best. You know what's right. You know what's good. You know what's best for me. Let's stand. Reverence. We must learn to reverence the Lord God in our hearts. We must keep that implanted in our hearts, in our brains, ingrain it. That no matter what it is or what you're doing or where you're at at any time, you must learn that we have got to reverence him in all things. All things. Don't do it and then go back and say, God, please bless this. We do that way too often. We do. All of us are guilty of that. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I bless your name today and I thank you and praise you for everybody, dear Lord, that is here and everybody that has listened on Facebook and, and on YouTube or whatever it might be, I thank you, Lord, for bringing forth the word in the anointing. I thank you, Lord, for all that you're about to do in each and every life. I pray over each and every person here today, dear Lord, that you would touch them with your spirit. 
Help them, God, to learn of you more and more. Help us, dear God, each and every one of us, to learn your ways and to know your ways, dear Lord. But I pray, dear Father, with all my heart today that you would touch this church. And God, I lift up Pastor Sheldon up today. I lift him up to you, dear God. Because, you know, the doctors don't know. They have no clue on what kind of a God we have. We have a God that is nothing for God. We reverence you, Lord, in your healing yes. power and your healing touch today. We reverence you, dear God, because you hold the, the, you hold the entire universe in the breath of your hand. God, you have all the answers. We have none. And Father, we call on you today to touch Pastor Shona in yes. his hospital bed right now. Touch each test that he has, dear God. Clear it all up in Jesus' name. We know, dear God, that he's healed, but we know, dear God, manifestation is coming. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, because this is a man. And you said, remind us of your deeds. Okay, Lord. We, we tell you about this man, Pastor Shelna, dear God. All he's done his whole life, dear Father, is help people. All he's ever done, dear God, is show up when people are in the hospital. All he's ever done, dear God, is meet people in the middle of the night. God, all he's done is all of these things, dear Father, that you called him to do. I don't know if I've ever met another man, dear God, that was a better servant than That's Pastor right, Jesus. And Father, you said in your word to remind you, and we're reminding you, dear God, that this is a servant of yours. Yes, and Father, we need him. We need him here, dear Lord. Yes, we need him teaching. We need a man like this to teach us yes. so we can become as loving. That's and that we can become as good, dear Father, in the things of you. We thank you, Lord, for his teaching. Yes. And God, we know that you're going to make a short work of the devil's work. We yes. make a short work of it. We rebuke it in Jesus' That's name. Right, amen. And we Hallelujah. thank you, Lord, for bringing him back to us, thank dear God, you, so that he can lead yes. you, dear Father, and help us, dear Father, with all the things thank that you Jesus. have in this church. Glory to you, all your Lord. Name. We give you glory. We yes. give you honor Hallelujah. and praise. And I thank you, Father God, because you're a God of glory. Yes, you are, yes, you are Lord. You're a God of glory. Does anybody want prayer this morning? Does anybody need to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you must. You must. It's a must. It's a prerequisite to see the Lord. That's right. It's a prerequisite. You must be born again. That's right. We'll pray Jesus, anybody, dear Lord, anybody, dear Father, that would like to receive you right now, we pray, dear God, you touch them, that their heart would be repentant, that they would be sorry for their sins, dear God. And if they yes. are, dear Lord, and they say this prayer, that, that they have asked you to forgive their sins, that, Lord, you would come into their lives, that you would come into their lives, make them that new person. Yes. And we thank you and praise you. Thank we thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. All glory and honor and power be unto you, oh, almighty God. In Jesus' name. Yes. In Jesus' name. Everybody's good. All hearts are good. Amen. All hearts are good. No prayer. Everybody's good. You're all prayed up. Everybody's everybody's good. You got to be good. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're back. Absolutely.